Hey everyone, this is Structural Steve again, and in this video, I'm going to show you the different ways you can start your initial bridge setup and go over the various tools for placing your support lines. I'll also show you how to reference in the terrain and alignment file that you created previously and set your active terrain. So to start off with, you're going to want to open up OBM and make sure you're in the correct workspace and the correct work set. Once you have those two things selected, just click on New File, select the appropriate seed file, and go ahead and give your file a name. And personally, I like to have the bridge name or number in the file name along with the letters OBM to indicate that this file is the main OBM file. So one of the first things I like to do once I start a new file is get my views set up the way I like them. Now everyone's going to have different preferences, but these are just the settings that I found most useful in the modeling process for myself. And the default setting when you first create a file is views 1 and 2 turned on as half screen plan and isometric views. And this is close to the way I like it, but I like to turn on the isometric view to a wireframe over here as well. And to do that, I select this display style list drop down and select wireframe. Now the majority of our modeling is going to be spent uh, in these two views here, but I do like to set up another view in this view 3 here. This one's going to be a full screen view and I'll turn on illustration and ignore lighting. And For this one I like to go into the display style dialog box and turn the background color to modeling so that I'm not staring at a white background which can put some strain on your eyes. And it is important to remember to save your settings once you do make these changes to your views so that they'll be the same the next time you open up that file. So now that I have my views set up the way I like them, I'll go back to only looking at views 1 and 2 for most of this modeling process. The first thing I like to do from here, is, and before I do any other modeling, is to go ahead and set up my state plane coordinate system in this OBM file here. This is important to make sure your geolocation is correct, and it's also necessary if you want to reference in any Bing Maps imagery. To do this, you just go up to the Drawing workflow, click on Utilities, Coordinate System, From Library, and then select your state plane coordinate system. In this case here, I already have mine saved up here as a favorite, so that makes it for easy access. Click OK, and then you can see we have that loaded in here now. From here, the next thing I'll do is reference in any of my reference files. In this case, I only have my terrain file and alignment file to bring in, but on a lot of projects you'll have you know, roadway design models to bring in, existing bridge, survey, right-of-way files, and just a bunch of other models you may want to reference in. And to reference those in, I'm just going to go down to my Reference Manager, click Attach, go ahead and navigate to those files that I already created. So here's my alignment file, and there's the existing ground survey file. Click on Add, OK. I like to make sure that the global origin is aligned with the master file, and just hit OK for each one. Now you might notice that the uh, annotation scale and the annotations of my alignment file kind of look a little messed up here. You zoom in, you can't really see them at all. And so to fix that, I'll have to go into my reference manager, click on that file, and then turn off the use active annotation scale here. So it's, it's turned on right now. And when I toggle that off, you'll see my annotations are set up the way I, I set them up in that reference file. Now with your project you know, located here in, in the file, if you wanted to, you could always turn on that Bing Maps imagery for some, some more reference. And to do that, you can just go to View Attributes and Background Type, and I'll go ahead and select Aerial. And notice the elevation offset is negative 1, so that'll put it at a negative 1 Z coordinate elevation. So that's below all my geometry here. And, you know, these are pretty decent resolution for, you know, free Bing Maps. It's not super high resolution like you can get from, 
you know, local authorities, but uh, it's pretty good. Gets the job done for the most part. So now that we have our reference files in there, we can go ahead and start setting up our bridge. And I'm going to skip over the bridge wizard for now and cover that in another video. So for a typical bridge, we're going to go back into our OpenBridge Modeler workflow. And you're just going to go to the Home tab and our Bridge Setup. And then click Add Bridge. From here, I'll just go ahead and give the bridge a name. Select the bridge type. And I'll leave these requires roadway alignment and use roadway alignment for stationing uh, unchecked for now. And those are for when the bridge stationing follows the roadway stationing. Most of the time, we'll not need to check these boxes. In this particular example here that I'm going to be modeling, I have a four span bridge with spans one and four being pre stressed concrete girder spans, and spans two and three being continuous steel eye girder spans. When you first create a bridge, you're also going to be defining the first unit. And since my first span is a pre stressed concrete girder span, that's the bridge type that I'm going to choose for this particular unit. And there really aren't any feature definitions set for bridge types yet but likely there will be one day. Once I have everything good in this dialog, I'll just go ahead and click on the alignment to assign it to the bridge. Now I'll just left click or data click in an empty space to accept. Now you can verify that the bridge was created by looking in your Explorer dialog over here. And we look good. Now you may be tempted to go ahead and set up the rest of your units, but it is important to define any support lines in that unit first before creating your next unit. If you don't do this, the unit definition will get messed up. So I just create one unit at a time, define all my support lines for that unit, then create the next one. Now once I create my bridge and initial unit setup, I like to go ahead and set my active terrain by clicking this button right here, and then selecting the terrain that I have referenced in. This is important as OBM actually uses the terrain to set the top of footers for you automatically. So we're finished in this bridge setup section, but let's go ahead and go over what some of these other tools are over here. The bridge wizard tool here is going to be for a quick setup of a bridge and does a lot of that initial setup stuff for you all in one shot here. Like I said before, I'll be going over this in a separate video, so I won't cover it right now. So we've already gone over this add bridge tool and add unit tool. The next one after that is going to be this alignment tool. So one common use example for this would be if you model your bridge already and say the roadway designer changes something in your alignment or your profile. So you would have to create a, a new alignment file, reference that into this OBM model, turn off the old alignment reference file, and turn on the new reference alignment file. And then hit this alignment button and select the new alignment to move your bridge to that new alignment. And I like doing it this way because this just ensures that you are moving it from that old alignment to the new alignment by managing it through the references and turning them on and off. Next button here is going to be this move button and this is used to move your entire bridge to a new station on the same active alignment. So what this does is move the first support line to that new station while maintaining all the other relationships between the subsequent support lines and associated bridge elements. And we already covered the terrain model here, setting your active terrain. And the last one left here is the Add Multi Spans Unit Tool. This one's pretty self explanatory. Uh, the one thing to note about this tool is you must have at least one bridge and unit in your current project to use this tool. Personally, I just like to go ahead and add units kind of one at a time here as I'm going along just to make sure that everything's set up properly. Now that the bridge is all set up here, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the Bing Maps that I have turned on just to make it easier to see things going on in the background. And I'm also going to turn off my terrain file here, just to make it easier to see the support lines that we're about to place. So now that we've got all that turned off, we're going ready to go ahead and start placing our support lines. Now, if you're not familiar with what support lines are, um, an OBM, that's just another term for peer lines, you know, which are going to be however you define your substructure element placement. Now, these are going to be your front face of back walls for you know, end vents or abutments, or center line of piers for typical piers, or however your client likes to define them. So there's three tools in the place support line section here. 
going to be place, move, and modify. The move tool here is just used to move a support line to another station on your alignment. Uh, one thing to note though is you can also hover over one that's already placed and you'll see the stationing on it. You can just click on it and kind of dynamically change that station number there to move, the, move it to a different station number. You don't necessarily have to use this move tool to move a pier line. You can also click on a pier line once it's in there and go to the properties and change the station that way as well. The modify button up here is used to quickly modify any support lines that were placed with the multi-tool here during the initial placement. And that'll open up a nice table style dialog to edit your support line information, but just remember it will only bring up the ones that you created with that multi-tool. There are three different support line placement tools within this place tool here. We have middle point, parallel, and multi. So the middle point one here is used for placing a single support line quickly and the parallel tool here is used for creating a support line that is going to be parallel to an existing one. Now this is especially useful if you have a straight or corded girder arrangement on a horizontal curve. And a lot of times when we have that scenario we like to make sure that the support lines are parallel to each other so that the girder lengths are all the same. If you don't use the parallel tool in this scenario you'll likely end up with slightly different girder lengths unless you go out to you know, six or more places in your skew angle definition. The last one here, the multi-tool. Uh, this allows you to place multiple support lines in one shot. This is the one I use most of the time unless I have uh, that corded or curved scenario that I just mentioned previously. Now on the bridge I'm going to model in this example, support lines 2, 3, and 4 are radial to the alignment. So that means no skew angle relative to that alignment. In support line 1 is parallel to support line 2. In support line 5 is going to be parallel to support line 4. And this is to make sure that those girders end up being the same length for spans 1 and 4 like I talked about earlier. This is a little bit of a unique scenario, but because of it, I'll have to place and set support line 2 first, then place support line 1 parallel to that one. So I'll just go ahead and use the middle point tool to place support line 2 first here. Now one thing that's important to note uh, in this place support line dialog here is going to be the, the length over here. And the length of your support line is important because it needs to be wide enough to cover the entire width of your bridge. So if my deck width was 80 feet, for example, with a total of 60 feet to the left alignment and 20 feet to the right of the alignment, then your support line needs to be two times the greater of those two values. So 2 times 60 in that case would be 120. My support line would need to be 120 feet uh, minimum length in order for that deck to be going beyond that support line. But for the bridge on the model here, my deck width uh, to the left of the alignment is 35.5 feet and to the right of the alignment is 15 feet. So my support line needs to be at least 35.5 times 2 or 71 feet, but I'll just go ahead and use 100 feet just in case something changes or the width changes in the future. It's just easier to set them up like that now and that way you don't have to mess with them later on if not a change like that does occur. So go ahead and put my inputs in here for this pier 2. Zero skew angle looks good. Put my length as 100. Stationing looks good and feature definition is set so everything looks good. So I'm just going to go ahead and left click, otherwise known as data click, in a blank space and let it go ahead and accept those inputs that I have in there. And you notice it went ahead and placed that one, now it's asking me to place another one, so I'll right click to exit out of there and you can see that support line in there now. Now I'll go ahead and place my abutment 1 support line using the parallel tool. And this tool requires you to know how much you want to offset that support line 2 parallel to create that support line 1. Now I already figured this out by doing some preliminary layout in uh, 2D microstation, so I'll just go ahead and enter it in that tool. And that's it. So one thing you might notice is that you don't really see the support line information or even the unit information here. 
And this is actually just a recent update in the update 8.1 that came out uh, just about a week or so ago. And by default, all the text decorations are using text styles that are annotative. So we're going to have to use a drawing scale that's larger than the one to one to see the decorations in the 3D model. So in order to change that, you're going to go over here to the analysis reporting tab and this annotative scale here to set this to something that makes those a little bit more better visible. So for me, I'm just going to go ahead and go to, I think it was one of 50 because that's what I had set my alignment reference file scale to earlier. And now when we do that, you can see the support line information here and the unit information here in green. So this one doesn't have a name, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that, go to the properties and fix that here in the properties. So I'm going to click on that support line, right click, rename, and I'll say button one. I'm going to go ahead and fix this second one here as well. Click on the actual support line, not the text, but the actual line. Properties, right click, rename, I'll call this peer two. There you go. Now those look good. We're ready to go ahead and set up our next unit. And to do that, we're just going to go back to that home tab, click on add unit. And remember the second unit was actually a steel girder bridge or steel girder span. So go ahead and click steel girders here and this data click to accept. Let's go make sure that that bridge was, uh, that unit was added. The explore dialog here looks good. This is unit two. If I want to, I can rename that now. And that got renamed there, that looks good. And I can even fix this first one here. And those look good there. So I'll go ahead and, and make sure this is the active unit because this is the unit we're working in now. So this unit two is a two span unit. So I need to add two more support lines and I'll use the multi tool for this. Go to place, multi. Go ahead and put my inputs in here correctly. And actually I'll just go ahead and leave these for whatever they are and then I'll fix them in the, the table that's about to pop up here. So those are fine, doesn't really matter what they are. I'm just go ahead and accept those. And let this little table here pop up and fix them over here. Notice the span like automatically updates here, so you can kind of check to make sure that those are correct based on your stationing, and hit OK. And those look good. So now those support lines are set. Let's go ahead and add our last unit here. It's going to be unit three. And this is going to be the concrete girder bridge. Okay, I'm going to go and make sure that that got added. That looks good. And we're going to head, go ahead and set this last pier or last end vent here uh, parallel with this one here to make sure that those concrete girders are all the same length. So we're going to use that parallel tool again. And I'll go ahead and fix that pier line right there. And that's it. And that's it. We've successfully set up our bridge and all of our support lines. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button that you see on the screen now. Give the video a like and share it with others. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section and I'll do my best to respond to them. See you guys in the next video.